going to do today, we're going to go over some real basic stuff. Now, if you've heard this basic stuff before, I want you to act like you ain't never heard it. And I want you to open your mind up, and I want you to see if you can get something new out of the same shit. If you can get something new out of the same information, that's good for you, because that means you're growing and changing. So when we go over the same information, okay, it's, it's for a couple of purposes. One, to get some new people up to date and to see if some of y'all that have been in here have been listening. I'm going to ask some of y'all that have been in here for a while a couple of questions today. Now, just a couple of housekeeping things. You're new in here. There's no sleeping in here. That's what we give you that dead part. Now, you have a medical condition. If you're detoxing, I get it. I'll keep you up. But if you don't have a medical condition, you ain't detoxing, I'm going to give you one warning. The second time, you got to write something for me. Okay? So wake up. Go to the little boy's room and the little girl's room before you come in here. Okay? I guarantee you, I don't know about you, but if the dope man would have told me, hey, if you sit in here an hour and a half without going to the bathroom, I'll give you a 20. I said, done. It's amazing when you come in here, all of a sudden, you get sleepy and got to go potty. All right, I want you to close your books. How many of y'all Sort of like me when I first came into recovery, I really thought if I could just quit drinking and drugging, everything else would be okay. Now, how many of y'all have been to treatment two, three, four, five times? I mean, y'all, this is your first time. It really doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Some of y'all are going to look at me like I got about 10 heads and 20 eyes. Drinking and drugging is not and never has been the root of your trouble. Now, don't get me wrong. Is drinking and drugging a problem for you? Absolutely. Is it the root of your troubles? Never has been. Now, when I get to a point about a year or two before I really got this program, it started coming in my mind, hey, I think I want some help. <laughs> Maybe. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> I think. So I go to this treatment center that's really big foot based. And I go in there, and the only thing I focus on is the drinking and the drugging. I really didn't want to change. I wanted to be the same old person, but just not. Use. Now I'm telling you, if you stay the same person, you will have no choice but to use. Now, fast forward a year or so, after I lost everything, I went, I don't want to exist like this no more. And I went in really looking to change. <clears throat> and when I started to take these steps for that purpose, they worked. And guess what started to change? This box up here. And what I used to think was common sense thus started to become uncommon sense. And when I started to change, guess what I no longer wanted to do? Use. But if you think about what I just said, if you stay the same person that you are when you came in that door, You'll have no choice but to use. You've proven it. Everybody sitting in here has tried just about everything not to put the first one in. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go over some basic stuff. We're going to show you how the steps are laid out, okay? Because if you can put some basic stuff together, you can start to build a pretty good foundation. Now, 
the steps are laid out like this. And look, there's 12 of the some bitches. That's why they put in that shit red. They stand out. There's 12 steps. They give you the problem. They give you the solution to the problem. And then they tell you to decide which one you want for. Stay in the problem or get into the solution. Then they give you some steps, action steps, four through nine, that you can take. That will get you out the problem into the solution. Once you're in the solution, the way you stay there is 10, 11, and 12. Now, we're going to lay it out for you. Okay? Look, I'm telling you now, today, you got to get, you gotta get up. you got to stay up. If you're having some issues detoxing, I'll keep you up. All right, step one. It's a problem statement. What they tell me in step one is the problem when it comes to my user. Now, if somebody doesn't really understand the problem, they will come up with a bunch of cockamamie-ass solutions to the problem they really don't understand. If you don't understand the problem, the solution you come up with will be wrong. Now, before I came in here, these are some of the solutions I tried. I tried the Nancy Reagan program, just say no. I mean, y'all said, I'm done. I'm done. That's it. I ain't using no more. Now, did that work? I mean, y'all have tried to use less, different shit, different days. How many of y'all have tried moving, changing friends, letting somebody else hold your money, changing your phone number? You try all kinds of crazy ass shit to a problem you do not really understand. Now, there's two things that are going on, and you got to be able to put them together. You got to be able to put the physical part of this with the mental part. Now, the physical part that they're talking about, they refer to it as an allergy. Now, how many of y'all, when we saw it suggest you got this allergy, you go, the hell I do. I can remember one of the first times they suggested I had an allergy to alcohol. This is what I thought. There's no way I could be allergic to alcohol. I'm drinking about a gallon of that shit a day. Now, take that word allergy and just put it to the side for a minute and ask yourself this question. Every time you dump the first one in, does your body start to physically crave another one. <clears throat> what was you using? Your favorite thing? Huh? What were you using? Alcohol. What were you using? Huh? Okay. How were you using? Drinking? Okay. Now, whether it's spitting on, whether it's heroin, whether it's crack, whether it's drinking, I want you to ask yourself this question, okay? If you had 10 lines ready to go, and they were big as my middle of my finger, could you do a quarter today, put the rest of it in the refrigerator, come back next month and do another little quarter, and do that every month until it was gone? Every time you snort the first little quarter, does your body crave some more? And the more that you snort, the more your body craves something. Same question. What were you drinking? Favorite thing? Okay. Let's say you had, what is that? Tequila? What is it? Tequila. Let's say you had a case of that shit. Okay. In the box, paint on it, seals on every box. Could you pull your one bottle out of there, crack the seal? 
pour you one little drink about like that and drink it and put the rest back in the box, go on about your business for a month. Come back, take that same bottle you popped open, pour you one more little drink. Do that every month until all that shit was gone. What would happen if you drank the first little bit? Did you crave some more? Now, this is how you determine if you have that physical allergy. You put one in of your favorite thing. Your body craves more. What's your first name? Eric. Eric? What were you using, Eric? Right. Crack? Me too. If you had a cookie about that big around and about that thick, oh, they with me. With two hitters with fresh burnt charbroil in them, packed just like that. <laughs> with two good lighters with a metal flip off, <laughs> well, you can adjust it about that high. You with me? I know you are. <laughs> Could you put you one hit on there? Melt, hit it. <laughs> Put that cookie in the freezer. Go on about your business for a month. Come back and hit the cookie again. One hit. Do that every month until that cookie was gone. What would happen every time you take the first hit? Does your body crave another one? You go and go and go and go like the energizer bunny. Until you run out, pass out, get locked up, or somebody stops you. If you're awake, you're conscious, and you got some of that shit in front of you, you're going to stay on one of these right here, I promise you. A spray. Now, how many of y'all, this is what you keep doing. You keep starting. And the end result is you end up on a spree. And when you come up off one of these bad sprees where you face a lot of problems and consequences, you sing the alcoholic's national anthem. I'll never do that shit again. Now, how many of y'all, when y'all say that, you mean it with everything you got? So what you try to do is live in your own skin. So you come up off the spree for a couple of days, sober, living in your own skin, which is miserable, huh? So you start a little buildup in your mind. And this thing starts to say, hey, I think you need one. So it starts to become obsession then. When the obsession kicks in, it overrules everything. Your job, your freedom, your car, your kids, your wife, Auntie M. It overrules everything. And this obsession tells you, hey, I need some relief. And at that point, I promise you, you need some relief, don't you? Now, does this tell you you're fixing to end up back here? No. It just tells you you're fixing to get some relief. Now, if you could put one in and get some relief, I don't see nothing wrong with that. But every time you put one in, you set that bitch off. <laughs> and you end up here. Now, how many of y'all keep doing this? Look, you start, you go through this process, you come down here, you quit. You try to live in your own skin, you build up again, you start. You go through this again, you quit. You just keep quitting, start, quitting, start, quitting, start. And in the meantime, shit keeps getting worse. Now, how many of y'all have said this before? I'm just going to do a 20. Now, if you don't understand this part of it, you would say that, but if you understand this, you'll see why you just can't do a 20. I mean, y'all said, I'm just quit, I'm done. If you understand this part, you'll see why you can't stay stopped. Now, 
for about 26 or 27 years. I've, I've lost count, it's been a while. This is what I would do. I would start, I would go through this and quit. I'd come off the air, little build up, I'd start, quit. Now, in those 26 or 27 years, it never got better. Never. Now, what would happen would be I would take two or three steps forward, and then I'd take about 10 back. I'd regroup, I'd take about four or five forward, then about 20 back. And if you count the shit up, I was going backward. But all my little sick ass mind could see was those two or three steps I was taking forward. How many of y'all do that? You'll catch it, you'll catch your breath for a minute, and you'll go two or three fall, and then the bottom falls out. And what you keep doing is starting over again. Now, for those 26 or 27 years I was using, I must have started over a hundred times. In the last 21 years, I have started over once. Now, we can't make you do this. If we could, we would have a line from here to California to get in here. But what we can do is give you some damn good treatment. Now, whether you take it or not, that would be on you. Now, if you look at these two things, the physical part and the mental part, if you're like me, you get this. You get this real good, huh? Huh? But what most of y'all miss is this part. It's cutting, baffling, and powerful. <laughs> this damn thing will tell you you got some shit you ain't got. And the shit you actually got, he'll say you ain't got that. How many of y'all in here? You will fool yourself into thinking you okay. Now, the obsession. That's where we're going to do all our work if you want to. Now, tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow is 21 years that I've not put. I couldn't go 21 hours before without putting one in because this damn thing got me every single time. And I can remember when I meant business, I would say, you know what, this time it's going to be different. And I'd fucking go tell everybody, hey, I'm, I'm done. But see, I figured if I told everybody, cat would be out the bag and I'd have to do it this time. <laughs> You know, even to fucking go down a probation also. Hey, bro, this time I'm quick. See, I didn't get this part. Because just about the next day, this thing would start working on me, and it would overrule when I told the probation officer, my mama, my boss, my kids. And when that thing took hold, it was like they wasn't even present. This thing would tell me, put that in. And when I put the first one in, guess what the hell I got? Uh, relief. <laughs> but guess what I set on? Look, how many of y'all, when y'all put the first one in, you this what you this what you did? Yeah. Now, if you could do just one, I don't see anything wrong with it, except some of us against the law. <laughs> But you can't do just because of that. And you can't do none because of that. How I many of y'all cannot stay stopped because of the obsession? And once you start, you can't control how much you're going to use because of the allergy. So these two things combined render you now. Anybody can say, hey, I'm powerless. 
But do you really mean it? See, and I can tell you, this is how you know if you really mean it. You say what I got to do. Not, not, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll do some of it, but I, I, no. what do I have to do? Because I don't know about you, but when I really understood this sucker had me by the yang yang, I told him, hey, I'm ready. What I need to do? And they said, two through. Now, how many of y'all, when you do this, you do a lot of shit you don't want to do? You lie, you cheat, you steal, you pillage, you let people down, and you let yourself down. And you have no problem doing that shit. Not one iota of a problem doing it. And you've actually gotten pretty damn good. I'll go, you're, you're like fucking great. Because <laughs> I was. Now, when I told them, I'm ready. I'm ready. They said, these steps are going to ask you to do some shit you ain't going to want to do. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I've been doing that. <laughs> so nothing's going to be different except the results I'm going to get. How many of y'all, if people knew what you were really thinking, they would go, ah, he's so sad. I feel so bad for him because I know he won't stop. I know she does. How many of y'all, you want to, you just don't want to do the shit necessary? Look, I don't know if y'all realize this or not. Where are you sitting at? I'm, te I'm telling you, I don't say this because I work here. I'm saying it because I know. What you get here, there ain't many treatment centers do it like this. I'm telling you there's not. And how many of y'all think this is the worst thing that could have ever happened to you? When actually it could be the best thing that's ever happened to you. So y'all got to be tired. Like, all oh. You? You? But how many of y'all, y'all beep up around here like everything's okay? And you won't tell anybody how you really think. Will you? Will you? <laughs> hey, alcohol and dope is a great persuader. <laughs> Look, I would never tell anybody what was really going on with me. And this is how I would deal with it when it bottled up. <laughs> Now, how many of y'all want that gone? I mean, gone. Gone. A price got to be paid. And that price is the reduction of self-centeredness. Now, I want you to check this out. The steps. I don't know if you really realize this, but the steps deal with two wheels. They deal with my will, self-will, and they deal with God's will. Now, if I can get self-will out the way, guess what taps in, I, I flow into? How? God's will. These steps, they're not designed to get or keep you sober. They're designed to remove self. And when self's removed, you tap in to some power. Now, stay with me. When I was early in recovery and they started telling me shit like that, I went, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. But then I started to ask myself questions like, how do I know it's bullshit? I ain't never done it. 
You haven't took the step. You? So you really don't? No. Now, this obsession, I won't, I won't look, this, I'm telling you, this is the key to wanting to do that, tap into some power. How many of y'all, the most important, nearest, dearest thing in your life, when the obsession kicks in, it's like it doesn't even exist. The key to getting this is to see this thing is so powerful that nothing human can touch it. You a human? Have you tried to remove this? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever come off off the spree and say, I'm going to quit? Guess what you tried to do? Remove that. You just didn't know. It. You couldn't even touch it, could you? See, how many of y'all, after all we say to you, you still think you can handle this on your own? If you could, why are you here? You would have done it a long time ago, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? How many of y'all, y'all go back out there and everything we tell you starts to come true? Everything. And you go. I, I got to go back to training. <laughs> but before I do, how many of y'all, when y'all come through here and we explain this and you start using again, how many of y'all have ever said, man, I heard Kevin James's voice? You didn't hear my voice. You heard God's voice. That's what you heard telling you. Hey, dumbass. Know where to go. Know what to do. Now, the physical allergy, can we do anything about that? No. You can't do anything about the allergy. If you got it, you got it. Now, I want you to check this out. If you didn't have that, let's say you didn't have the upset, right? Where'd you put that in? Yeah, I put it in. If I had, if I didn't have the mental session, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a problem. Well, wait a minute now. Listen, listen to what I'm asking. Every time you put that first one in, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that tells you that. Yeah. If you didn't have that, would you put the first one in? Yeah. 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 No. Look, look. The I reason. The yeah. reason you keep putting that first one in is because this obsession up here tells you to do it. Yeah. If you didn't have that, right. So if you never put it in, would you set that up? So you could kill two birds with one stone. If you take care of that, that becomes a mute point. Look, stay with me. Got to listen. For the last 21 years, I have not put because that's been removed. Now, do I still have that? Yeah. yeah. But that I can live with if I don't have. But if I got that, that will rip me to smithereens. Now, how many of y'all, if we asked you, are you powerless over drugs and alcohol? What would you say? Okay. He said, absolutely. Do you know why you powerless? Okay. If you don't know why, guess what you can't really say you are? Yeah. And the first step says, we, you got to know why to admit it. You can say it all day long. But if you don't understand why, you can never. Now, let's get you to understand why. You got that? You got that? Now, are you powerless? Why? Guess what you can take now? 
the first part of the first step. And if you ever do, you're well on your way. How many of y'all been to treatment centers? They never tell you anything like this. Never. But yet they expect you to take the steps. Right. <laughs> right. The obsession. That's the crux of the problem. And that son of a bitch is cunning. It's baffling. And it is powerful. Now, if somebody doesn't have this, are they still powerless? Yeah. No. Are they still alcoholic? Yeah. Because they still have. Yeah. Now stay with me. What makes me alcoholic? Allergy. The allergy. What makes me powerless? If I take the allergy and couple it with. See, people like me, we recover. I'm not fucking recoveries. I am recovered. And where I have recovered, right there. I guarantee if you'd have known me 22, 23 years ago, no, no. you would go. If somebody told you what I was doing today, they'd go, there's no, there's no way. Not him. See, because what used to be the guiding force with me was up here. And it was very dishonest, very inconsiderate, very selfish and self-centered. Now, how many of y'all, y'all don't want to use anymore, but you don't want to change? Come on, be honest. Yeah. See, most people, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. Now, in life, in most things in life, if you put 50% in, you can get 50% out. If you put 10 in, you can get this is completely different. If you put 80% in, you get nothing. You put 90% in, you get nothing. You got to be all in or you're all out. Now, I don't know about you, but when it came to the dope game, I was all in. <laughs> and I knew everything about that shit. I knew where to go down to Baton Rouge to eat uh, North Baton Rouge to get the best cream crack that's ever been in this city. I hear to plug up a hitter now. <laughs> But how many of y'all in here, when it comes to this, you go, well, you know, I get, I guess I will. How many of y'all, when they put fentanyl in front of you, you went, well, you know, I, I can bite. Did you do that? When somebody do a big old cookie in front of you, you go, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> Look, them all I went. <laughs> Look, after that first hit, you didn't think they'd get any bigger, huh? They went, <laughs> Boy, you know, the cops nowadays, they love them heroin and fentanyl hits. You know why? They wait for them to do a hit. As soon as they do a hit, like they go, boom. <laughs> and the cops just go arrest them. They hate us old crackheads. Because they ain't catching us. <laughs> How many of y'all in here? Let me ask y'all something. How many of y'all laughed at that and really enjoyed smile sober? Ain't that crazy? So guess what that means? You can have fun so that's what that means. Now, if you have this problem, you have this obsession, and you have the allergy, and you are, you know who Stevie Wonder is? He's a blind musician. Stevie Wonder can see. 
it would take some if you are. Now, how many of y'all come in here and y'all think y'all already got the power? <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I didn't stand up front of my kindergarten class and tell them when I grew up I wanted to be a patient in treatment. <laughs> And I don't think none of y'all did either. And guess what the hell you are today? So you may just not have the power. <laughs> now, this power that we're talking about. I got one sister left. One of my sisters passed away. They were normal people. They didn't have this problem. They were two of the most spiritual girls I've ever been around. They didn't drink, they didn't drug. And you know how they tapped into that power? Going to church. Now, how many of y'all have passed through the doors of the church before? So if that would have worked for you, guess where you would be sitting? In here. So I got to come at that power a little different. Now, I don't know this yet, but I got a real good sneaking suspicion. When I get up to the pearly gates, God's not going to say, well, how did you come get that power? Through the church or the steps? I think he's going to say, hey, my boy, job well done. See, us alcoholics, we different. <laughs> we real different. <laughs> so we got to come at this power a little. Different. Now, step two. This is where they're going to give me the solution. Or they're going to write me a prescription. Well, you woke up when I said prescription, didn't you? <laughs> now, what? I got a question on step one. If we ain't never took the first, I have an allergy. Say that again? You never took that first one like your sister. Uh-huh. And you don't have that. No, I would say you don't have this. Well, I don't know. Now, look, they they look, I guarantee you at a at a Christmas party, they probably took a glass of wine and took two sips. And they were done. So I would tell you somebody like that. Don't have that art. Now, one of those normal sisters of mine, <clears throat> she was standing up on a stool cleaning a, a, a fan, and she fell and broke her elbow. Now, this was back before y'all ruined it in the emergency room for normal people. <laughs> <laughs> she goes to the emergency room, she leaves with a bottle of lard tabs about that big, about that big around. Six months later, she's got everyone but a half of a one. Because when she ate that half of one, guess what it made her? Yeah. That's a normal reaction. How many of y'all, if y'all ate a half one, you'd have wanted more? Mm -hmm. Ate that whole bottle and then stood up on the fucking stool and fell off again and broke the other <laughs> elbow. <laughs> so, did that answer your question? All right, let's roll. Now, Back up here. This power that we're talking about, you have been around this power your whole life. You have just never tapped into it. Look, that right there, that receptacle, that is a power greater than you. I promise if you took a paper clip and undid it, stuck it in there, it would be a power greater than you. Now, if I took a vacuum cleaner and I stuck it around that power, would it work? Well, it's around the power. Now, if I took the cord, tapped it in, hit the button, would it work? Yeah. See, how many of y'all, you've been around the power your whole life? And you ain't never worked like you're supposed to. 
if you never tap into that power, you would start working like you're supposed to. Being around the power, okay, I guess. For some people, not people like me. Now, how do I tap into the power? Now, there's two parts to the solution. And you've got to be able to get a good balance. It amazes me how some of y'all been to treatment numerous times, and all y'all here is go to meet. Look, look, let's get something right out the way. If you have this problem, and all you do is go to meetings, you're going to stay stuck in the problem. Now, are meetings part of it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, part of the solution is getting involved in the fellowship in Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, the fellowship, where it's at, is going to the meetings. And in these meetings, I'm going to get a lot of support. Now, how many of y'all been to treatment numerous times and all y'all do is go to freaking meetings? You never take the steps. Now, what do the meetings do? They support me. They can only support me long enough to get me through the steps. And once I get through the steps, I stay in the fellowship to support others. But you can't give away something you ain't got. Just like after you smoked all your dope up, you couldn't give it away because you ain't got it no more. <laughs> now, the second part of the solution is actually doing the damn steps. This is the program of AA, and this is the fellowship in AA. They're two different things. The fellowship supports. Now, the steps. Where they are at is in the first 103 pages of the big book. And what the steps do is change me. So, the fellowship supports. The steps change. Now, how many of y'all keep coming out of treatment? Go into our meeting, and we try to get you going over here, and you won't do it. And we can only prop you up and support you for so long. Because we're humans, and we'll eventually let you down. That's what humans do. <laughs> now, how many of y'all have tried this over and over and over? I will tell you, there should be a lot of hope for you right now. Because maybe this time, you won't just go here. You'll come over here and really join us. Now, how many of y'all know somebody who used to be like this? <clears throat> they came in here and did this, and they ain't like that no more. Now, I promise you, the ones of us who have recovered, we don't wake up every morning and do these two things to try to fucking fool you. You know why we do it? That's right. It works. That's why. And look, if you get it, man, that's great. And if you don't, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Great for you. Now, how many of y'all know somebody used to be like this, they joined us, did this, and they're not like that no more? Now, when I went to treatment that second time, I'm in there about three days, and they got this guy, he's on the treatment center grounds in the sober living house, and he had been there about six, eight months, and he's one of those guys that I said I would never end up like him. And I did. I was worse. 
<laughs> so I'm watching and I'm going, this motherfucker putting on an act. Ain't no way he changed. And I'm watching for a couple of days. And I knew it. And it was no act. It was consistent. And he was just as humble, as grateful as you could be. And I went. I believe I can do that. How many of y'all in here? Y'all will condemn this before you've even given it a chance. They call that ignorance. And ignorance can be fixed. Stupidity lasts forever. Now, if somebody asked you, hey man, where's the fellowship at? What would you say? Look, how many of y'all y'all know about the meetings? But if somebody asked you, hey, where's the program of AA? What would you say? No, this is the fellowship. Yeah. Look, the, the fellowship's in the meeting, the program is in the book. Now, how many of y'all, y'all get this big, thick book? They call this the big book. The reason they call it the big book is because it's freaking big. Now, all of this stuff right here, if you took the first 103 pages of the book, and you put it like this. That's the program of AA. You see all this crap right here? You know what all this is? Crap. Now, is it good crap? Yeah, but it is crap. Now, how many of y'all know why they put these stories back here? When this first started, there were not many meetings to go to. So the way they carried the fellowship, they put it in print. Put the stories in the back. Now, you don't have that problem today. Because there's meetings just about any little city you've ever been in. Now, that's the program. Now, what's your first name? Everett. Everett, would you rather do this program and get these results or Everett's program and keep getting Everett's results. Well, the only way you can do this one is if you're convinced 100% Everett's will never, ever, never, ever, ever, never work. Huh? I know it works. Look, how many of y'all, y'all keep trying to make your program work somehow, some way, some shape, some day? And the more you try, the worse yet. See, you're supposed to get better if you try. <laughs> but you keep getting worse. Now, what makes a person like me say, hey, I'm done with my program. What do you think makes somebody like me say that? Hey. The one at the top, yeah, it's called a thorough ass kicking administered by drugs and alcohol. Now, I used to think taking an ass kicking was an attribute. And some people can take more pain than others. Now, for about 26 years, what drugs and alcohol did to me was mangle me up a bit. And in the back of my mind, I always thought I could make it work. That last year, it didn't mangle me. It kicked my ass. Well, I didn't want no more of my program. Because look, that's what most of y'all do. Y'all don't want to use, but you don't want to change your program. And your program is the reason you use. <laughs> Now, how many of y'all in here have ever watched the ultimate fights? 
where they put them cat, two cats in that octagon and they shut the door and they beat the living shit out of each other. Now, have you ever watched one of them getting his ass pummeled? And how many of y'all got it? Oh, oh, man, oh, tap out, dude. Now, he's getting his ass pumped, but as long as he keeps fighting, what continues? The pain. You ever watch one of them getting his ass kicked? He can't even hardly lift his hands. But when he gets ready to tap out, it's like all of a sudden he gets this new first of beer. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he taps out, what stops? The pain. The pain. How many of y'all are getting y'all's ass pummeled? And people keep saying, oh, oh man, what are you, what are you doing? Tap out. And you keep fighting in the pain. Now, when somebody taps out, there will be no lurking notion in your mind if you have or you had not If you're wondering if you have, you probably have it. <laughs> now, the morning that I tapped out, it was about 2 a.m. I'm in an apartment with a big, it was, it was about a medium cookie. <laughs> about two or three cases of Budweiser. I got enough to last me for quite a, another day. <laughs> and I went. Done. I'm done. This will never, ever, ever work. And the guy that was with me, I said, bro, take all this shit. Get the fuck out of my car. Now, from that morning till today, I ain't struggled with not one of them. Not one of them. Now, before that morning, it took me 27 years to do step. That is the step that took me the longest. <laughs> now, this program right here, what it's going to do is separate you from your program. And most people don't want to be separated from their program, so they won't take this one. What they'll do is just go to some dam and they think that's going to be good enough. Seeing the people that just go to meeting, that's this telling you, you don't really need to do this. And the whole time you go on to meet, that obsession is going, I've got to tell that's what I want. And you go into those meetings for a month or two and you're carrying this book around, quoting it like you would know what it says. <laughs> and the whole time the obsession's going, oh, I got him. This natural is going to be a doozy. And then all of a sudden, one day that obsession goes, BAM! <laughs> Boy, that was better than a hit, wasn't it? <laughs> and that obsession just goes, BAM! You reach over and put one in, and when you come up for air, you go, how in the hell did I ever get started? Yeah. How many of y'all been there and done that? Is that just the most miserable, sick feeling in the gut of your stomach you've ever experienced? Yeah. How do you think I can tell you how it feels? Yeah. See, I ain't up here telling you to do some shit I ain't never done. Because if I ain't never done it, there's no way I can tell you with the passion I carry how to do this. Ain't no way. You could have to give me an Academy Award. Because I've been doing it day in and day out, going on 21 years. I just got a little nicer. <laughs> Some of y'all been to trade with me when I was just starting out. It wasn't fun. All right. So what did they tell you in step one? 
They give you the problem. In step two, they give you solution. Now, if somebody tells you the problem and they tell you the solution, in step three, they tell you make a decision on which one you want more. That or that. Now, how long have you been drinking and drugging? What do you keep deciding you want more of? This or this? Yeah. And you put a lot of work, energy, and effort into it, don't you? Yeah. How long have you been using? 21 years. Which one do you keep deciding you want more? Yeah. Look, nobody can make you decide to get into the solution except you. But if you decide you don't want to join us and stay here, as Bobby Brown said, that's your prerogative. <laughs> but you have to be willing to accept all the consequences that come with it. Shut up and just accept it. Don't whine about it. Don't cry about it. You just say, well, that's what I decided. I won't. Now, Step three, if you tried to take step three off the wall, by the way, I think one of the worst things they did was try to put the steps on the wall. You can't work the steps off the wall because the directions for them are in the book. By the way, these things remind me of fucking pool rules at the YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> and I broke every damn one of them. How many of y'all try to take the steps off the wall when the directions are in the book? Now, if you were like me when I first came in here, this is how I read step three. Turn my will over to God. How many of y'all, that's how you read step three? Yeah. It don't say that. It don't even imply that. Listen to what it said. Made a <laughs> two turn. So all you do in three is make a decision. Now, decisions left on their own change absolutely, positively nothing. nothing. How many of y'all have decided buku times to get your shit together? And after you made that decision, you did absolutely nothing. nothing. And your decision remained Same. a decision. I want you to picture this for me. You ready? All right, where you go? I'm here. Okay. They got a big 100 acre lake. With me? Right slap dab in the middle is a log with three big old bullfrogs on it. And one of them decides to jump. How many you got left? Three. Why? He decided. Bingo. See, decisions change nothing. If you have three frogs on the log and one of them decides to jump, you still got three. three. For him to carry out his decision, he would have to take action and actually yeah. jump. How many of y'all keep making decision after decision after decision and you never jump? Your green ass is still on the log. <laughs> now, one tells you, two gives you, and three just says, now, if you've been lying to yourself for a long time, right? How do you know this time you mean business? How would you know that? This is how you know. To care, look, you got you, it's, this shit is real simple if you listen and complicated as fuck if you don't. <laughs> Step three the only thing you're really deciding is to stay here or to seek this power. Now, if you decide, you're not going to do this and this. Unbeknownst to you yet, 
what you really decided is to stay. Now, if you decide, I don't really want no more of that action. I want to get out of the problem and come over here into the solution. How would you carry out your step three decision and do that? That's the million dollar question. You would have to take some damn action. Now, the good news for people like me, they got some action steps that are outlined in the big book on how to do it. Now, the action steps are four, five, six, seven, eight, and Now, how do you know if you're serious or not? This is how you're going to know. When we put these four step papers in front of you, you're going to be ready to put everything down there. Everything. And if there's still some lurking notion, you've decided to stay stuck in. Because if you don't do a good four step, you can't do it. And your decision will remain a decision. You'll never come over here. You'll stay stuck here. Now, I want you to listen to this. The very first time I went to treatment, I did not want to be there. Now, I know none of y'all in here are like that. <clears throat> Where I went, if you finished their 28-day program, they gave you a certificate and a point. I had a lot of people pushing me and prodding me. I had parents, ex-wife, kids, probation. <clears throat> Said, if you don't go get some help, you can't see your kids, you can't come to our house, I'm going to drop the hammer on you. You know what I heard? Oh, they just fucking joking. <laughs> now, I went to that treatment center, and all I wanted, that certificate and that coin, so I could bring it back to those people and say, here, I did what y'all wanted. Leave me the hell alone. Now, that first time, I followed every treatment center rule to a T because I wanted that damn. But when it came time to do these, nothing. Nothing. I'm sitting in this treatment center for 28 days. And I'm listening to them, and it sounds fucking great. So when I get out, I got to keep the charade up, you know. So I go to... I don't do shit over here or get a sponsor. They have crept my style. Now, about four or five months in, when people are going, he might be okay. <laughs> Guess what starts creeping in? <laughs> about six months in, that so much goes, boom! And guess what I put in? And when I came up for air about two weeks later, they all found out. They did all exactly what they said they were going to do. I couldn't go to their homes. I couldn't see my kids. And my freedom got taken away. It wasn't their fault. It was mine. I, I, they told me. Look, how many of y'all people keep telling you over and over and over what's coming? And you go, oh, they're not going to do that. You know what's telling you that? Now, when they put the four step papers in front of me that first time, I put just enough dress up shit in there so they would think I was doing it because I wanted. <laughs> but the shit that was really burning and bothering me, I said nothing. How many of y'all? Y'all got four or five or 15 things you don't want nobody to know that happened to you or you did to somebody. And what you say is, that'll never see the light of day. I'm going to take that to the grave with you. And you are 
It'll be a lot different quicker than you think they are. <clears throat> now, the second time through, they put those papers in front of me. The first shit that went down there was the shit I didn't want to talk about the first time. <laughs> See, alcohol is a great persuader. Mm. Now, in my fifth step, I finally got to do a good fifth step because I did a thorough and honest. In that fifth step, do you think I suffered from a little humiliation and discomfort? I did for about five fucking minutes. That first time through when I didn't put that shit on there, I suffered from a lot of humiliation and discomfort for about a year. So what if what you five minutes or a year or two or three? How many of y'all are so self-centered you think you're the only one that's did the shit you've done? <laughs> <laughs> you know, since I've been in this program, I quit counting at 300. I quit counting about 10 years ago. That's how many fifth steps I've heard. And not one person has ever come in a fifth step and told me something and dropped my jaw where I went. Mother, oh, really? Because mm -hmm. I've either done it, seen it, or heard about it. There's nothing you could possibly say where somebody would go, damn. Now, how many of y'all are scared to death somebody's going to go back and repeat what you tell them? Look, can we guarantee 100% they won't? No. no. Can I guarantee it about 99.999? I can. Because yeah. people that know me know if they ever come do fifth steps for us and shit gets repeated, I will make sure they blackball it. Now, how many of y'all, when y'all out there, y'all don't care who knows? You come in here and get sober and you don't want fucking nobody to know. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? It's amazing how those alcoholics are. We so ass backwards and pathetic. Now, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Are they going to ask me to do some things I'm not going to really want to do? Yeah. So, I do it here when I don't want to do, or I go back and do it here. But one way or the other, you fixing to do some shit? You don't want to do Now, yes or no, do you have some shit you really don't want to put on the floor step? Yeah. You? Yeah. You? You? Yeah, we all did. Now, if somebody, look, I want, I want you to really listen to this, because this is where I think a lot of y'all get hung up. If somebody does a good fourth and fifth step, what really opens up for them then is six and. And these are the two steps that separate the men from the boys in this program, or the women from the girls. So see, if somebody sees it in the fourth and fifth step, they go to work in six and, and those two steps are the changing steps. In six, I get ready not to be a selfish, inconsiderate, dishonest, you know what? And in seven, I go to work to do the opposite. And people like me who do a good fourth and fifth step and are really doing six and seven, they want to make amends. Because they know now it's them. It ain't fucking that body else. Me. You know, when I came in here, I ain't filed income tax in about 10 years. I owed the IRS close to 20 grand. And I thought I would never get that taken care of.
was always trying on my power. God had different ideas. <laughs> How many of y'all don't want to be sober and you want to go to the meeting, but when it comes down to doing the things that you have to do, you don't want to do them? I'm not making those amends. Now, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. What do we call them? Action. The action steps. Now, who can tell me what four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actually do? Changing. Changing. Oh, wow. They tap me into, and the power changes. And it also does something else I couldn't do. Remove. See, people like me, when we come in and do this, we get way more than we ever bargained for. Now, I want you to check this out. Today and every day, I do 10, 11, and 12. Now, every day, when I continue to take Kevin's inventory in step 10, Step 10 is repracticing all the action steps. Every day when I do 10, I'm repracticing four, five, six, seven, eight, and. And what does four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tap me into? So every day when I do 10, I tap into this power deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Where nothing that life throws me can shake me. Not death, not sickness, not loss of a job or relationship, nothing. How many of y'all, the least little thing that happens, you crumble like a house of cards? And how many over here, y'all want to say, I'm a man, I'm a man, man. <laughs> Are you? It would be highly offended if I said, no. Now, let's sum it up. Step one tells me. Step two gives me. And in step three, they say decide. If you want to do this and tap into the power and join us and continue to do it, or if you decided you really want to stay here. Now, I look at it like this, okay? Does anything happen in step one? We just give you some information. Does anything happen in two? No. We just give you some more information. Does anything happen in three? No. no, you just make a decision. So one, two, and three are sort of like this. Get ready, get set, go. 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 <laughs> Nothing happens until you start taking the action steps. How many of y'all been to treatment and they say they brought you through steps one, two, and three? You've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> and they go, go to meetings. Have a nice life. We'll see you in 60 days. <laughs> now, these steps right here got me out of hell. And these that's locking in me to heaven. You know, if I could make a t-shirt of what I really got in this program and let you wear it, you wouldn't give it back. You're a selfish person. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I do that? No, I can't. I can't make a shirt my recovery and give it to you. Now, can I give you the materials to make your own shirt? Yeah, I can. You just got to be willing to make it. You know, over these 21 years, I've been accused of a lot of shit. I've been accused of getting a lot of people sober, which is a lie. I don't have that power. And I've been accused of getting a lot of people loaded, which is a bigger lie. But I can make you thirsty. 
for one or the other. Now, how many of y'all tried this before? Come on, raise your hand if you have. I want you to be honest right here, okay? When they threw you the four step papers, did you get thorough and honest and put everything? Yeah. Okay. Did you do a fifth step? Yeah. Did you really go to work in six and seven? No. Okay. Did you make amends? Yeah. To who? Give me, give me two people you made amends to. Grandma and grandfather. What'd they tell you? When you said, hey, I was wrong, what can I do to make it right? What'd they say? They said all they wanted was for me to get my life right. Keep doing it. Yeah. Did you? No. So did you make the amends? Oh, no. Got it. See, look. This isn't a pick and choose which action step. You all in? Oh. You all out. Comments? Questions? You're a good teacher. Well, yeah. thank you. But you know you got an old saying. What? When the student's ready, the teacher shows up. So they got a few in here who wouldn't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I, have a, I have a comment. I went to my treatment and I they didn't show us the book. They didn't show us the stuff on my counseling. Okay. And then I went to a long term treatment. And I was so I was um straight for a year and a half. Okay. And they ended up relapsing. Right. I never once broke a step mm -hmm. forward. Let, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. At those places you went, did they have some good, beautiful people that met well? Yeah. 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 I went to I went yeah, to they did. every day. Every they day. Did. They just don't know. Really? And you can't fault them for not knowing. But you know what you can do now? You'll never be able to say where you went to treatment didn't teach me the step for the book. <laughs> never can you say that again. Because I was debating where to go. Now, if you get this, the only thing we ask is to give it back. Because there's a lot of people like you who ain't never had this chance to get it. Guys, y'all get up first and head out. Oh, my God.